Inshallah, today uh, the talk, uh, the short talk, will be split between um, resilience and also a little bit about where to go from there and how to kind of understand and process the worry that we're feeling. Uh, what is normal? Uh, what's um, maybe not very normal? Um, okay, so let's begin, inshallah, by defining uh, what exactly is resilience. So what we mean by resilience is um, this is uh, what people do when they are faced with hardships. Like, how do we act when we're faced with adversity, with hardship? It's all of the positive outcomes that we gain from a situation, despite the fact that it is a hardship or it's a negative situation. Um, resilient people are the type of people that when uh, this entire stressor or hardship is done, they graduate from that experience being more competent, more positive than before. Uh, they, they learn a way to adapt to the crisis or the trauma. They, they use the challenges uh, that they face, such as the challenges we're facing now as a result of the coronavirus, to grow. And as a result of all of these skills that they learn um, and the growth that they develop, that makes future hardships more manageable. And I think that's so critical because if we um, take this opportunity, what's going on with the coronavirus and what Allah has decided to test us with as an opportunity, as teaching moments, that's going to make future hardships more manageable for us, inshallah. Um, it's, resilience is not something that, okay, well, some people have it and some people just are not so good at dealing with difficulties and hardships. It's something that you can learn. And I, I highly recommend that you use this as teaching moment to learn how to become resilient in the face of hardships. It's kind of hard to learn how to become resilient uh, when you're not facing a crisis, a trauma, or a hardship. So this is the perfect opportunity for you to learn how to do that. And why should we learn how to be resilient? Because, uh, because guess what? This is not going to be the first trauma or hardship that we, we, we face. Allah has mentioned it and has promised it many, many times all over the Quran that Muslims, that everybody is going to be tested with tribulations and the good and the bad. So um, how do we know for resilient people? Okay, um, Resilient people, people who, who are competent during times of crises, um, they understand that hardships, that adversity is a normal part of life. They're not like shocked. You know, how could the corona, how could this happen to us, to our generation? Um, I remember one time that when at the very beginning, one of my kids said to me, you know, I never thought this would happen to my generation. And, and, and then instead of, and I think a better question is not to ask why me, why my generation, why would God do this to me? But rather, why not? Why not you? And, I, and then I had to explain that to them that, you know what, um, maybe Allah has given you this test because he knows that he is the all-knowing, the all-hearing, the all-capable, the all-wise, and he is confident that your generation can handle this. And then, you know, on Friday when we read Surah Al-Kahf, uh, the chapter of the cave, you know, it mentions the story of the youth um, who were so such who was so full of strength and resilience that Allah decided to give them a very difficult hardship. And then we can draw the parallel between look at Allah, how he tested the youth. It's the same, you know, similar situation here for Allah touching, testing this generation because he sees khair in you. He sees uh, beauty. He sees strength and confident. I would shy away from telling our kids that, you know, Allah is doing this to you because your generation is bad. Your generation is full of sins. Your generation is full of, I can't, I can't, and failures, and therefore Allah is punishing your generation. I, I don't think that's a very positive way of thinking about things. And at the end of the day, we actually don't know if it's true. So let's go with the positive spin on things. Is what, why not me? I am strong, I can handle this, I'm resilient, and Allah is giving me this as a teaching opportunity because he sees something special in this generation, inshallah, and I pray that this generation lives up to the challenge, and I'm confident that they will. Second criteria of people who um, are resilient is that people who are resilient are good at knowing how to direct their attention. In other words, they focus on selecting what they can change and they accept what they cannot change. 
So it's not easy because we are hardwired for looking out for negativity and paying attention to negativity. If on your right, there's this beautiful scenery of mountains, deep ocean, and it's so blue and grass and beautiful animals. And then on your left, there's this big lion. Guess what? Naturally, no matter how beautiful the scene is on your right, naturally your brain is going to gravitate towards processing what's on the left, the threatening lion. Why? Because that makes you live longer. Because if you mesmerized over the beautiful scene, you might be eaten by the lion, right? So that's fine when, when there's an inevitable fear that's kind of finite, that's about to attack you. It's good that you're paying attention to the threat and the negativity. But subhanAllah, Allahu A'lam, how long this is going to stay, the coronavirus, and how long this test is going to stay. It may stay months. It's already been weeks. So we cannot dedicate all our attentional capacity, all our time, day in and day out, to processing, to paying attention and noticing negativity. It's probably not wise to have your news on all the time with how many people have been affected and how many people died and who died where and read all the negative uh, uh, kind of stories of who you know wasn't uh, the, the, couldn't have a funeral and all of that. That's great. A few reminders here and there, but you cannot jeopardize your entire present moment in the service of processing this negativity, right? Because even though the threat is on TV, even though the stories you're listening to on TV are not your stories, they're not your, the stories of your family members, they're not the stories of your friends or someone that you love, your brain acts as though they are stories that are pertinent to you because of how much you're marinating your brain in all of this. The brain is an am amazing imagination machine. So um, I, I, I would probably have a budget for how much time um, I allow in terms of uh, checking the news feed from Facebook and the CNN and whatever your, your news of choice. There's also this amazing thing that research has shown about resilient people and that they, they practice what's called benefit and what that is, is that they choose life, not death. Uh, they don't lose what they have for what they've lost. So, you know, God forbid, you know, if we think about someone who's lost to their child, right? I, I can't think of anything that's more devastating than that. Uh, the resilient person knows that if they are sitting and um, they give up their entire life to process the death, they're probably going to lose their marriage. And let's say that they have a good marriage with their spouse, they lose that. They may lose their relationship with the remainder of the children, the ones who are alive. So the resilient people do understand that we're not going to lose what we have for what we've lost. It doesn't mean that their sadness stops, not at all. Um, the other thing um, that is probably not, it's probably, it's important to all the time but it can't be more important than, than nowadays. And that is to be cognizant of our blessings. I know it sounds so like, oh, okay, gratitude, everybody's talking about that. But the research on gratitude is so clear that more gratitude leads to less depression, less sadness, more happiness, more resilience. Even if it's just as simple as you dedicating a few minutes of your day to writing down three things you feel gratitude for. You know, subhanAllah, we say Surah Al-Fatiha, every single salah and every single rak'ah. There isn't a rak'ah or a salah that's gonna be acceptable without saying the opening chapter, right? Um, and the first ayah in this, I mean, some people say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is the first ayah, but uh, the second one or the first one, depending on, um, is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, right? It begins with the ultimate praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so if that is kind of a, an analogy for what, how we should start everything that we do with some sort of gratitude. And subhanAllah, before this all started, um, and at the beginning of 2020, I, I, you know, there was a few things I said, okay, this year I wanna focus on. And gratitude was one of them that I said, I, I really wanna spend time and be very mindful of the blessings and, and, and marinate my mind in the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for me, no matter how simple they are. And, and 
عند دعاء اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك love that دعاء of gratitude ultimate gratitude so notice take notice of what you have and, and it could be something very simple right but for you just like to, that it, it might it the, the amazingness of it might be in its very simplicity so go ahead you know be kind of like a hunter a detective of um noticing things that are well in your life instead of dedicating the whole day for noticing everything that has gone wrong in your life and how it's changed <clears throat> the third thing that resilient people do um is uh, that they do what is helpful to them not what's going to hurt them so you know um if, if somebody lost a child is going through their pictures all the time and watching videos of their birthday and their graduation is not going to be helpful and resilient people know that you know what to close that file and to stop looking at the picture because they, they realize that it's 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 hurting them not helping them is watching the news 24 hours helping you or hurting you you got to be mindful you have to be grounded in the moment to say you know what am i doing in this moment well you know i, I and how am i feeling well, I've been watching, you know, the CNN for, you know, three hours and, you know, I don't feel good. I feel like, you know, as a parent, I'm stressed out. I'm yelling at the kids. I am angry. I feel sad. I feel like, you know, all of these things. And as a resilient person, you should have, you should be like, then I got to stop doing that. Then tomorrow I cannot continue to do that because it didn't make me feel very good today. Um, and I, 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 I like this term. I kind of came up with this term. During this crisis, as I was thinking a lot about what's going on and how are people, different people, strong people, religious people, resilient people, um, how, are, how are they handling all of this? And a term kind of like came to mind that I like to call spiritual resilience. And how I define spiritual resilience is, is that this is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the crisis. And after the crisis, um, you you know, ask yourself, how is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this crisis? Is it is it one of dismay and is it one of questioning of why is this happening to us? We are good people. How could this happen? Um, is it one of like questioning, well, what's next? What the future might be like? And I'm very uncomfortable with this uncertainty. Or is it a relationship where there is now some sort of um, like subhanAllah for me, at least um, I'm a very, I'm a perfectionist. I like to calculate things. I like to plan A, B, C, and D. And I'm very uncomfortable with uncertainty. And when this crisis happened overnight, I had to change the way I teach at university. I had to change the way I parent. I had to change everything about my life, but that wasn't the teaching moment for me. The teaching moment for me was the fact that I had control over tomorrow. And my gratitude came in when I realized that I have cognitively, spiritually grown up as a person to be comfortable with that uncertainty. And subhanAllah, I felt enormous amount of gratitude when I became you know, okay with uncertainty. When I became focused on today, and when I was like, okay, tomorrow, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen. Because literally at my work, every day was new instructions for what's gonna happen. Until this day, you know, the, the, the administrative process, everything has changed and there's new rules every day. And this has built such a capacity, such flexibility in the way I think about things that I am so full of gratitude for. So again, spiritual resilience has to do with how is your relationship with your Lord? The one who owns tomorrow, the one who owns yesterday, the one who owns today, the one who owns what would, has hap have, what would have happened today should the impossible have happened. The one who owns what, should have ha what would have happened tomorrow should yesterday be a different day. All of these possibilities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of them. Don't think about it. It's not, you know, take it off your mind. You know, this is a subhanAllah, a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, uncertainty tomorrow belongs to me. Right? And the, the, I think out of this crisis, gratitude is really 
I am now in charge of the present moment and I'm now seeing the gift in the present moment that I personally, I'm saying about my, myself, not everybody, of course, has neglected to um, enjoy the dynamics and the parameters of the givings of the present moment. So, um, uh, you know, uh, subhanAllah, I, I think I went over uh, a little bit uh, too long here. So, let me say a couple of things about worry, inshallah, and then we'll open it up to uh, questions before I finish up with uh, my time here. I think I'm getting near my 20 minutes. Um, so, how do we deal then with this worry? So, we said that, okay, uh, the uncertainty is a very normal part. We're going to use this as an exercise, as a teaching moment to become resilient people. Alhamdulillah, I hope, inshallah, we all agree on that. Then what do we do with this worry? One is that accept that worry and anxiety in our current situation are completely fine and healthy reactions to the difficult times that we're in. To say that, you know what, I'm completely not worried. I'm completely not anxious about this. Nobody's going to give you an award for this. That's, you know, it's normal to be a little bit uh, apprehensive about the situation. And it's a good thing. It's also another ni'mah, another blessing from Allah to be a little bit worried because this worry is going to make you motivate you to put a mask on. It's going to motivate you to wash your hands frequently. It's going to motivate you to um, and not go out as much. So it's a, motiv it's a part of our motivational system. It's another blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is that when you have these worrisome thoughts, don't judge them. Like subhanAllah, some people are really harsh on themselves. Um, and some of the things we say to ourselves, we wouldn't dare saying to our enemy. I'm not even going to say friend. So don't be judgmental of yourself. Don't say, you know, here I go again. I'm, you know, I'm being afraid. Here I go again. I'm the warrior. Here I go again. As everybody always calls me like an anxious person. Here I go again. My iman is weak. I'm, I'm not believing in qada and qadr. Stay away from judgment. You know, you have a worry thought. Let it, inshallah, you know, pass by. Don't be judgmental of it. Um, the other thing I, 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 um, I highly recommend, inshallah, is that when we are in a fearful situation in, or a negative situation or when we are feeling a uh, threat, we t our attention naturally shrinks and it narrows to focus on what is causing the negativity on and, and the, the threat. This is our autopilot. Unfortunately, during an epidemic, that threat, that danger, that negativity is might be on for many, many more weeks, maybe months, maybe years. Allahu a'lam. And I'm now comfortable with that uncertainty. So in other words, you're going to have to be intentional about finding positivity, about not missing out. Like there's going to be moments in this. Your family dynamics have changed as a result of this epidemic. Don't miss out on some of the cute things that are happening in your present moment. So the other thing is be comfortable with your present moment because you're focusing so much about how to, you know, fight with this negativity and how to control this negativity and work out what's going to happen tomorrow. Enjoy the present moment. Be, un be very comfortable with this uncertainty. Be flexible with your routines, right? This is not going to be like, this is not working from home. This is a, a brand new problem that we are still working out the solution for. This is not going to be the classroom has moved to home. That's not true. We are not doing, we're not replicating the classroom at home. Should we, and we shouldn't aim to replicate the classroom at home. This generation, the people alive today, the ummah alive today is going through an, un, um, you know, from our own experiences, of course, in our past, this is nothing, right? Many other hardships have happened, but this is for our own experience or limited experience is a little bit unprecedented. We're still working out the solution. We don't want to haste into thinking, okay, we figure it out. We're going to work from home. We're going to do classrooms from home. Everything has changed. Be flexible. And, you know, and, and, and maybe learn from this change, you know, and, and I'm going to end with this inshallah. You know, uh, people say, when are we going to end with this so we can go back to normal? I want to ask the question and I want to end with this question. Who said, the way we lived before was normal. So I'm going to stop here, inshallah, and to try to take some questions. Assalamualaikum, so everyone that's on the talk. Can you, um, if anyone has questions, can they use the raise hand option? Um, or you can type your question in the chat box if you don't want to ask it on the screen.
anyone have any questions? Um, if there are no questions, I really want to thank you. It was really great learning the different attributes of resilient people and how we can adapt it in our lives. And this idea of spiritual resilience, which kind of reminds me of like this idea of tawakkul as well. Thank you. Do you, well, there's a question that just came in. Are there any particular tips for different age groups to practice resilience? Um, yes, resilience, all ages can practice resilience. So, um, so for example, for um, kids, let's say that young kids, elementary school kind of um, definitely is very concrete. So um, one thing is that when they're feeling um, frustrated and, and there's going to be a lot of frustration, right? The, the, their Zoom is not working, their homework didn't go through, they're feeling frustrated. Um, a lot of times they, they might look like they're sad, but really they're angry or frustrated. They might look like they're angry, but really they're sad. So this is a beautiful exercise that now we have time to help them figure out that no, not, all of this is not just called sadness. All of this is not just called frustration. So what you're feeling right now, you know, Sara or, you know, Fatima is, is because you are frustrated. Your homework didn't go through. Okay. So how can we work with this? So instead of like going to pull your brother Ahmed's hair or, you know, hide your sister's cell phone because you're so frustrated, how can we deal with this? And how can we label our emotion the right way? And subhanAllah, when, when you tell them this, number one, they're shocked that you're so calm as a mom. Right? And then subhanAllah, just like, you know what I mean if you're a mom. And then, um, and it's a teaching moment with them that will stay beyond this. I urge everybody not to miss out on the teaching opportunities in, in this beautiful um, blessings from this crisis, if you will. Awesome. Um, it looks like another question came in. I think it says, what advice do you have for this during Ramadan? Yeah, okay, the, yeah, I saw that in Arabic. Um, okay, so the advice that I have for Ramadan is one that a week before Ramadan or whenever you're comfortable, inshallah, yeah, you should be having a family meeting. And you're going to have that family meeting. The youngest person is going to be as involved as the head of the family, right? So the youngest person is going to contribute to, because subhanAllah, sometimes we as adults are boring people that don't have good ideas. And then you have your first grader coming and saying the best idea ever. It's like, oh, we didn't think about that. You know, we didn't think about dedicating a whole room to prayers. So, you know, and have them get involved. So a week before, ask the kids, okay, your task is going to be, okay, the chore is going to be, we're going to decorate the house to, to make it so it, re it reflects that Ramadan is coming. So, and, and, and the house, they might make a mess doing this. And for me as a perfectionist, I have to work on that. But, you know, inshallah, your, your, um, your flexibility with the mess is better than mine. But we're going to have a meeting about, okay, so how is this going to look like Ramadan? What is saying, what are we going to miss out from not having Ramadan in the masjid? Let's talk about what are we going to gain? How, how is this Ramadan going to be the best Ramadan ever? Like what, are, what are certain things that the situation allows us to exercise that will make this the best Ramadan ever? Your children might be saying something like, we're going to sleep in a little bit more. Alhamdulillah. So does that then mean, Ahmed, then that we can like wake up for Fajr or maybe half an hour early and we can do Qiyam together? Does that mean we can increase our Quran a little bit more? So, but have all the ideas. Every family has its own dynamic come from that family. Decorate the house. Each person can have like their own of like, how are we going to decorate the house? An idea that I saw and I really, really liked is that uh, have a room, take out things from that room, prepare it with uh, rugs for prayers. So then this is going to be the room that we do tarawih in, right? So that we do the jama'ah in, and we pray together in, that we're going to do Quran in. Um, everybody that needs to come and do religion, they're going to come to that room. And subhanAllah, that room, that floor, that ground that you're praying in as a family, Yom al Qiyamah on Judgment Day will come and testify and will say, That family prayed together that Ramadan in that crisis on this ground, and it will testify for you. Do we have any other questions from anyone else? That was really great advice on how to prep. Can you be actually get together? Oh, okay. So okay, I see that. That's a interesting question. Okay, um, I think so. Uh, so I, I, a part of me, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting my vulnerability out there, is that I really had to work on my perfectionism for many, many years. 
um, to come to the point to be okay with things not perfect, right? Because it's not good for me and it's not good for people around me. And alhamdulillah, I've, I've arrived at that point. But I think to be a complete perfectionist by definition and still be resilient might be a hard combination. As I said, I worked on my perfectionism so I can work on my resilience. So if I were to guess, I would say that working on your perfectionism would be the prerequisite course before working on, on your resilience. Assalamu alaikum. Wa I have a question. Uh, after like a one month or two months when the crisis is over, mm -hmm. I'm sure people, they're gonna go back to school and work and whatever they are doing. And I'm sure there's gonna be some anxiety and some fear. What do you think, what's the best resource for those people that they are worried or scared to go back to normal life? I mean, excellent the question. Imam, is the imam at the mosque or they need a psychiatrist or what did they think? What do you think what's the best resource they have after they go back? Okay, uh, I think subhanAllah, um, because we're experiencing this globally, this is not just us here in the US, the entire global everywhere in the world. If you say the word Corona, they know exactly what you're talking about. You could be in China and they know what you're talking about. Um, so we have to use also the present moment as I ended my talk and to say to ourselves, what does normal mean to us? Do we want to go back to normal? Because maybe this is the time where we have the courage to say, you know what, what we, how we lived before was not normal. And I don't want to go back to that kind of life again. And then you adjust what your new normal is going to be. I imagine that the adjustment for a new normal is not going to be just for us. It's going to, everybody's going to have to adjust to a new normal. God knows how this is, how long this is going to last. Now, um, your question has an excellent element to it. And that is that not all of us are, go it's, are going to find this shift back and forth easy or are going to come out stronger from this one. And some people might be really affected by, by this, that they might then develop into an anxiety disorders or into depression. And we shouldn't judge these people as not religious or as weak because some, some, there are genetic predispositions. There are different life experiences that can make someone not benefit as much or find this much harder than someone who didn't go, go through these experiences. So I, I um, and I've said this before, is that you, what you don't want to do is you do not want to inherit mental illnesses from this crisis. So if you feel like you're going down the slippery kind of road or that you're already there and that the situation has um, kicked in your predisposition, then try to seek help as soon as possible. Your Imam, your Sheikh, may Allah bless them for dedicating time for things like that. But at the same time, you may need then a professional at that point. And there's a lot of Muslim organizations that offer very um, um, cost effective, very reasonable um, cost in terms of therapy or counseling. Right. We have a question that also came in. Do you have any good recommendations on how to build resilience? So I, think I, I lost you. Can you see the question again? Yeah. Do you have any good recommendations on books on how to build resilience? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say something and it's going to be the funniest. Well, maybe not the expected response. Uh, but um, if you learn about the prophet's stories, I have never seen anything that is more teaching, like is more instructive than the prophet stories. There is not one prophet who has not gone through tribulations. Give me one. I'll give you all the money that I have. Not very much, but I'll give you all of it. Okay. But every single prophet has gone through multiple tribulations, right? So, um, um, alhamdulillah, like this time has allowed us um, as the family to watch uh, this show that was recommended by my sister. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her for that recommendation. And it's, um, it's, in, it's in Arabic, but of course my kids read the English caption. They go back and forth. And um, one is called Kalimullah, and this is, it means the prophet who spoke to Allah. So obviously this is the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Excellent, it's two seasons. The other one is called um, uh, Khalilullah, about the story of, Pro of Prophet Ibrahim. This is translated to both English and French. And then the, the last one that we're started watching is about the prophet alayhi salatu salam, Muhammad. Um, and it's called Habibullah. Um, so if you want your kids to learn Arabic, it's good. They can go back and forth between the captions. But subhanAllah, like 
the, what the prophets have gone through, and if you sit and contemplate and 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 how they walk out of this, it's just unbelievable. Like, just I can go on forever about this. Nonetheless, though, there are many secular books about resilience. Um, I, I what I will say is that if you are going to buy a book about resilience that's a secular in nature, you want to always check out the credentials of the author, and then um, open the book, read a couple of pages. If you feel like you like it, that you should get it. Because what I like might be very boring for other people, right? Um, so, but you, you, you just want to make sure that um, the author is credible because everybody now can write a book apparently. So. Okay. Um, are there any more questions for Dr. Salaikum, I do. Jazakumullah khair for the very beneficial lecture. Um, I would like to know, do you have any idea on uh, how to socialize, like for kids, alhamdulillah, the Islamic Center, how to do a great job for us adults, like we're connected with Sheikh Hamdi and they have a very good program, but for the kids, you know, if, if this is going to be longer, you know, we have to social distance and they cannot, you know, get with friends and stuff. Do you have any ideas on how we can socialize and you know, just have, uh, you know, super hyperactive kids that, you know, it's hard to, know. you know, maintain, you know, keep them calm all the time. And then I know they want to see their friends, but I can't, they can't go and, you know, socialize. Any ideas on that? Excellent question. But if you may allow me one correction, it is impossible for our human beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as social. It is impossible for us to not be social. It's just impossible. Our chemistry, our hormones, our brain, our psychology, all of it only allows the parameters that we are social human beings. Perhaps what we're talking about is physical distancing. So I don't like that term social distancing at all. I, you know, I prefer the term physical distancing. And subhanAllah, I, uh, um, I was interviewed by the BBC and I made the same correction. Um, so you can definitely, actually, I think actually this, during this crisis, we have become more social than before, right? Um, so like now, like there, I actually talk to people on the phone and we, we, we see each other on Zoom. There's a lot more um, talking to people that maybe I haven't talked to in many, many years. Um, I, I say this and I, um, I let my kids do this, is I, uh, my, my especially elementary school, they get playtime, they get recess. I ask them to go on uh, FaceTime with their friends. I, you know, I set up FaceTime kind of um, things for them. If you have iPhone or there's similar things in all kind of um, uh, platforms. And I, I have her meet her friends face to face, not just on the phone, but to actually meet them face to face on, on the phone, uh, on, on FaceTime. And they, she meets as a group with her friends and they send funny cartoons to each other and they share the screen. And But they need to see people face to face because imagine, subhanAllah, if this not two years, Allahu alam. If, if this lasts two years, then you have a generation with, with zero experience with socialization. That's going to be creating psychopaths. We don't want that. So they must, for their proper development, including academics and for your sanity, they must be seeing people other than you, right? Like by, by, by uh, FaceTiming, by meeting them at regular times, right? And have them, and, and it's very important that they also FaceTime different people. So it shouldn't be the same friends all the time because they need to develop socialization with different kind of people, people they like, people they don't like, people they are similar to their age. Um, we also, my kids meet their cousins on Zoom, right? But that, that is really important. The other thing is I'm gonna give you, as, as a parent, I can tell you that when you're home with your kids, all of a sudden that now you have to implement the rules instead of just a few hours they come to you after school, it's now the entire day. We're all one big happy family singing, I love you, you love me. Obviously, you get the sarcasm there. So you're going to have to kind of turn a blind eye for a part of the day. I, For my sanity, I decided that there's a chunk of the day where I'm just not going to be wearing the parenting hat. Because we cannot be criticizing, we cannot be parenting, we cannot be patrolling 24 hours. That's a recipe for an anxiety disorders. You're going to have to let a part of the day where you're not being a parent, but a, a, a chunk of the day has to be that you're still a parent that you're still enforcing the rules, but with full stability and with the understanding that that was a big change for them. And maybe as kids, they're not good at verbalizing their frustration and they're doing it through overactivity. 
and 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 and, and um, what looks like bad behavior, but it could be just that they're feeling sad, that they're frustrated, that they miss play time. I can't hear anybody. I don't know what happened. Thank you so much for that. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Thank you, Sister Marwa. Beautiful uh, and enlightening for us. You, you, you coined the. I'm sorry, I, I lost you. I, I lost you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Alhamdulillah. There was a new, there was an old normal before Corona. Now we are through Corona, we are in training. Allah is teaching us a lot of stuff. Can you, what will be the new normal? What, what will be the accumulation of what we understand? What's your projection? Um, honestly, I don't know what the new normal is gonna be. And Alhamdulillah, I've worked on myself enough to be like, I'm okay with that, that we have to realize that we as human beings have a beautiful brain that no other organism on this earth has right allah says that he created the human very special very capable and one of the the capacities that the human being brain has is the ability to adapt in new situation so this is the time to feel confident and to say you know what we have a crisis and i'm dealing with it there's going to be a new normal and so just like i dealt with the situation now alhamdulillah and i've learned from it i'll be able to deal with the new normal. But more to that is that you're going to also, within your humanly capacity, direct what the new normal is gonna be. So maybe this is a conversation that the adults in the house first wanna have. So if you're married, your spouse, if you're an adult child living with a parent, you know, the adults in the house will have that conversation of like, you know, here's how we lived before. Inshallah, when this is over, do we wanna continue normal the exact way as we want what we do? And, and you know, I asked this question to fourth graders and subhanAllah, they have so much wisdom, like children, when we ask them, they have so much wisdom that we just need to stop and ask them and you will be surprised what their answers are going to be if you give them time. And you know, you know, one child, she said, you know what, I, I don't think I want to go fully the way that it was before. Um, I think I want to change like the way we time we wake up. So instead of waking up early to go to school, like, why don't we change that time? That's a change that may happen. It may, it, parents might find that their children, well, actually, that's what research show, that teenagers do better when they start later in the day. It might be that people are, might be thinking like, wait, there's more to life than working 60 hour weeks, right? So, and it's just gonna be something that you as a family decide, you know, was normal okay for you? If the way it was before, was that okay with you or not? But there's gonna be time and you always, you have to be, you have to love yourself. You have to exercise self-compassion and passion, meaning that inshallah, when you go back, it's another abrupt change. So give your time weeks to be like, you know what? I'm gonna click into gear with time and I'm gonna be patient. I'm gonna be compassionate with myself and the people in my family for whom I'm responsible. You know, subhanAllah, I wanna just mention an example. Right? The salah, the prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mandates that we teach our kids to pray at age seven. But you know what? He gives him three years to get used to the change. Right? So look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so compassionate uh, and kind with us. Uh, did I lose you? Are you still there? I believe we're all still here. Oh, that is very compassionate. Um, so, wrapping up, does anyone else have any more questions? Zakumullah khair, Dr. Marwa. Allah yeah. ikum. Shakar Allahu laki wa taqabbal Allahu minna wa minki. Allah yafadik. Yeah, inshaAllah. Can you I hear me? Also Are you able to hear me, sister? I have one question. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Zakallah khair, sister Marwa, for this uh, beautiful educational and informative uh, lecture. Really highly appreciate it. Uh, and just uh, in your opinion, um, 
Can you give me the most positive point that we can take out of this pandemic? Absolutely. Um, the most positive thing is that you're going to learn that something, a big change has happened and that you were able to adapt. You were able to make it work. So if you're going to make this work, whatever change, whatever uncertainty in the future, you're very capable of doing it, inshallah. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're gonna, this is being recorded and this will be on our YouTube channel, um, inshallah. I am gonna unmute Dr. Um, Shaquille real quick. He wants to say a few words, so you are unmuted. We can hear Dr. Shaquille, we can hear him. Um, Brother Shaquille, I don't think we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. My, apolo my apologies. Um, um, I, I just wanted to join Sheikh Hamdi and, and all of the community members who are online today to really express my deepest gratitude to Sister Marwa for uh, Time, wisdom, and knowledge this evening, which I believe is so so beneficial to us, to all of us. I I can't can't say anything else other than raising my hands and praying for you and your beloved family and bless you and to continue to strengthen your heart, your knowledge. May we all benefit. to come, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. So very grateful to you, Sister. Sara, thank you for hosting us today also. Thank you. It's wonderful um, joining in and being able to host. So we're going to go ahead and close this off, inshallah. Um, just a reminder to everybody, we do still have our emergency fundraiser going on. You can go to our website and please donate and help out this masjid so we can continue to provide um, talks like this. Um, if anyone has any more questions, this will probably be the last few before we close this off. Sara, Jazakumullah khair, ya Sara. Insha'Allah, bismillah, maybe Dr. Jawdat, he will do some announcement and also we can end by Adhan al-Isha. Also raise Adhan al-Isha if we can uh, humbly ask Sheikh Uthman to raise the Adhan will be great, insha'Allah. I will try to find uh, Muhammad Zuhdi, he's not here. So, Sheikh Uthman, after the uh, announcement by Dr. Jawdat, if he has some, inshallah. Uh, yeah, Sarah did the announcement, but I have one, uh, I want to have a reminder. It's tomorrow, inshallah, with uh, Dr. Al Khalidi at night. We're going to have a special dear guest, guest uh, with us. I'm not going to say the name, inshallah. We want everybody to attend so that you'll, you'll say salam to him. So be with us tomorrow night, inshallah. And uh, Sheikh Uthman can raise the adam. Do you want to unmute your mic? Perfect. I did already, Salah. Khairan. Now you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Hello, Allah, 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 Allah. 
أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيه على الصلاة حيه على الصلاة على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله والصلاة القائمة آتي سيدنا محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجات العالية الرفعة وبعث اللهم المقام المحمود الذي وعدته إنك لا تفرح بعد جزاك الله الخير شكر الله لك يا سارة وتقبل الله منا ومنكم شكر الله للدكتورة مروة عزب شكر الله للجميع تقبل الله منا ومنكم نختم يا سارة عند وزدعاء سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب لي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين أمنوا وعملوا الصالحات تواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر اللهم اجعل جمعنا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم أصلحنا وأصلح أولادنا وبناتنا وسائر المسلمين اللهم احفظنا والمسلمين والمسلمات من بين أيدينا ومن خلفنا وعن أيماننا وعن شمائلنا ومن فوقنا نعوذ بعظمتك أن نغتال من تحتنا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين اجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا أوزعنا أن نشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علينا وعلى والدينا وأن نعمل صالحا ترضاه وأصلح لنا في ذرياتنا إنا تبنى إليك وإنا من المسلمين ربنا 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 اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم اللهم اكشف البلاء والوباء عن العباد وعن خلقك في كل مكان يا رب العالمين وردنا إليك ردا جميلا قبل توبتنا واغسل حوبتنا وأحسن أوبتنا اللهم بلغنا رمضان وارزقنا فيه عملا صالحا متقبلا صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد على آله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله كل خير إن شاء الله إلى صلى الله بإذن الله ونراكم إن شاء الله والسيو إن شاء الله at 6 o'clock for the حلقة of Quran إن شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته